Thank you for joining. I'm Connor Filson, a PhD candidate in Dan Blumstein's lab at UCLA, and today we will be talking about the fitness consequences of social structure. Social relationships are the result of behavioral interactions between two or more individuals. Social relationships have ranging demographic and evolutionary consequences. But to get at the adaptive value of sociality, we must first understand how animals are affected by the social interactions they partake in. Over the past decade, social network analysis has been used to provide precise measures of sociality. Using both direct interactions, quantifying how social an individual is, and indirect interactions, quantifying how social an individual's social partners are, or that individual's position in their network. Social networks have been used to quantify the fitness consequences of social relationships across species and contexts. While significant work has focused on an individual's position and behavior in a network, the connection between these specific attributes of social structure and individual success is greatly understudied. Mapping this potential link is a necessary step towards better understanding the adaptive value of social relationships and its important consequences for fitness. Group size is a common measure often used to quantify the relationship between the group and the individual. However, networks can provide more precise measures of social structure. Studies in humans have already begun to show the effectiveness of using these attributes of social structure. Uh, this is from the attributes that lead to higher winning percentages in online team-based video games to understanding patterns of efficiency in office workplaces. Few studies in biology have used social structure to understand how group structures change through time and space or after adverse events. A preliminary study exploring displacement networks in captive banded gobies identified a negative relationship between individual reproductive success and the rate of aggressive behaviors in the network. However, the connection between these specific attributes of social structure and individual success is still greatly understudied in both humans and non-human systems. I'll ask this question using yellow-bellied marmots, a facultatively social ground-dwelling rodent native to the alpine habitats of the Rocky Mountains and Sierra Nevadas. They are active around five months a year, hibernating over winter. Social groups are harem polygynous, comprised of match lines with uh, one or two territory of offensive males regulating mating. The population here at the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab in Colorado has been studied since 1962 with reliable interaction data since 2002. Specifically, I will explore mass gain as it is an important fitness correlate for hibernators. Fat is the only source of metabolic energy during hibernation for these marmots, and thus the name of the game is to get fat or die. Mass gain is a time trade-off as marmots must balance their time between eating, resting, looking for predators, uh, and interacting with others. This is a good system to explore the social structure fitness relationship because a lot of social network analysis work has already been done, giving context to the consequences of individual behavior. Uh, for, for this uh, presentation, we uh, conduct behavioral observations for about 30 hours a day, five months a year. We record who's interacting with who, where, when, who initiated that interaction, and what type of interaction is it, affiliative or agonistic. Live trapping is also conducted to collect genetic samples to provide, uh, uh, and to provide each individual with a unique dorsal fur mark for identification from afar. For networks, I build weighted and directed networks uh, from affiliative interactions, which uh, per, uh, make up about 90% of the interactions in the system. And these networks are only uh, comprised of yearlings and adults in a given year. Pups are excluded as they emerge mid-year and mainly interact with their mother and their litter mates. Network isolates are extracted by valley location, and these isolates is what I designate as a social group. From 2002 to 2019, we have 132 unique social groups with an average group size of 10, uh, and these group sizes range from 2 up to 60. To quantify social structure, I use seven network measures. Uh, with eight minutes, I am unable to give these measures the time they deserve, uh, and while each measure is used to tell a slightly different story, they can be broadly categorized into three groups. Connectivity, comprised of density, transitivity, and cut points. Homophily, comprised of reciprocity and degree assortativity. And shape, or size, uh, comprised of diameter and centralization. I normalize all these measures by group size to control for any effect group size may have on the measures themselves. I run seven linear models, one for each of the network measures, to analyze the relationship. 
Group size, sex, age, and location are included as fixed effects. ID and year are random effects. And I include three interactions between the network measure, age, sex, and location uh, to identify any conditional uh, nature of these relationships. Uh, our first finding uh, was with our fixed effects that sex, age, and location uh, are significant uh, contributors or predictors of uh, uh, mass gain and that they explain a majority of the variation in our models. This coincides with previous work done in the system on mass gain. Our only main effect was with transitivity, which gets at the connectivity uh, of, of a network. And this was related to suppressed mass gain. So as groups became more connected across age, sex, and location, uh, uh, marmots gained less mass. Uh, there was a relationship with, with suppressed mass gain. This is against our a priori hypothesis, which was based in a previous paper in our system that found that there were higher rates of transitivity in affiliative networks. However, these results are highly context dependent on an individual's age. Density, which is another way to get how connected a network is, is bad for yearlings. This coincides with previous work in the system, showing that adults, and especially adult females, tended to become less social as they aged. This suggests adults are more buffered from the connectivity of their social group than yearlings are, who are, and these yearlings are responsible for a majority of the social interactions that structure marmot groups. Cut points, which gets at how fragmentable or how easy it is to break a group into two different groups, is good for yearlings. As groups become more fragmentable, yearlings gain proportionally more mass. This complements the finding for density. Together, yearlings uh, residing in connected and unbreakable groups gain less mass than those in connected and breakable groups. This is supported by marmots being facultatively social and experiencing costs from being more connected on the individual level. However, as yearlings are the glue uh, in marmot social groups, this, this finding is interesting and calls for more research. Reciprocity, uh, which is how mutual interactions are, is bad for yearlings. Uh, reciprocity is an important concept for the evolution of behaviors such as grooming, cooperation, and dominant hierarchies and is typically hypothesized to be beneficial in affiliative scenarios. Surprisingly, we found the opposite. This may be because as reciprocity increases, as does the number of interactions occurring. And as we just saw uh, on the last slide, more connectivity is bad. Lastly, degree of sortativity, which gets at the social homophily of a network, is good for yearlings. Higher social homophily in a group may lead to a reduction in social stressors and interactions are more predictable and reliable. Having similar social partners can reduce the energy uh, trade-off between maintaining and participating in social relationships and foraging behavior, uh, anti-predator vigilance, and providing more time for foraging. So in summary, social networks is a powerful tool to quantify social structure. We found a negative relationship between the connectedness uh, and marmot mass gain. Yearlings, uh, more so than adults, experience sharper negative relationships with connectivity. However, yearlings, more so than adults, benefit from social homophily in their networks. While these results are correlative and not causative uh, and have small effect sizes, they illustrate a modest but significant relationship between group social structure and an important fitness correlate in yellow-bellied marmots. I'd of course like to thank my co-authors uh, and happy to take any questions.